So point B, Jesus expected the people of his day to privately interpret the scriptures. Jesus expected the people of his day to privately interpret the scriptures. He used the such terms as search the scriptures. Have you not read? Is it not written in your law? Which show that the people were obligated to read and interpret the scriptures. Furthermore, he quoted the scriptures as the final source of authority. And he always showed the consequences of failing to do so. You err not knowing the scriptures. Thus making void the word of God through your tradition. These things show that Jesus wanted and required a private interpretation of scriptures. The common people readily heard and understood Christ's teachings without an infallible interpreter. Mark 12.37 says, And the mass of the common people liked to hear him. Jesus said, I praise thee, Father, Lord of God, heaven and God and, and earth, that thou didst hide these things from the wise and prudent and didst reveal them to little ones. Jesus said to the, his disciples, Have you understood all these things? They said to him, Yes. If the common people could interpret Jesus' words, and much of the New Testament is simply the word which Jesus spoke to the people, so can we. Isaiah, prophesying of the New Testament way, said, A path and a way shall be there, and this shall be unto you a straight way, so that fools shall not err therein. God has endowed us with reason and the power to choose between good and evil, right and wrong, truth and error. So we don't need an interpreter for that. These are all set before us, and the responsibility rests upon us to function as intelligent free agents. God will judge every man in accord with his response to his holy word. Jesus said, He that despiseth me, and receiveth not my words, hath one that judge him. The, ju the word that I have spoken, the same shall judge him in the last day. All these things show that a private interpretation is possible, and necessary. You can't say, well, that priest told me differently. No. After the church was established, the apostles and prophets likewise required that people make private interpretations of Scripture. After the church established, and the people did that very thing. When churches began to establish, be established as a result of the preaching of God's Word, and when the New Testament Scriptures began to be written, Never in one instance did the apostles and prophets declare that private interpretation must now cease because the church was now not the official interpreter of the scriptures. They did not direct the people to an infallible interpreter of the word, but to the word itself. Please note the, carefully the following. What the Bible does say versus what it does not say, Ray, the concept of a private interpretation. These things I am writing to you that you may know that you have eternal life. These things I am writing to you that when you obtain the infallible interpretation thereof, you may know that you have eternal life, which you think is in the Bible. These things I am writing to you are the Lord's commandments, or the things I am writing to you when officially reinterpreted are the Lord's commandments. See? Are you, as you are reading, may you understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ. As you are reading, and have it officially interpreted, may you understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ. The sacred writings which are able to instruct thee unto salvation by the faith which is in Christ Jesus, or the sacred writings which, when infallibly interpreted, are able to instruct thee unto salvation by the faith which is in Christ Jesus. With meekness, receive the engrafted work which is able to save your souls. With meekness, Receive the infallible interpretations of the engrafted word, which is able to save your souls. And the dead were judged by what was written in the books. And the dead were judged by what was written in the books in accord with the infallible interpretations thereof. Point F. Passages which are addressed to the private individual require the believer to undergo judgment, study the word, Test teachers as to their proper teaching of the Bible. Withdraw from teachers in error, all requiring a private interpretation. So the passages which require false teachers to test false teachers and to withdraw from those in error require a private interpretation. How can we obey those commands without making a private judgment 
in regard to what is and what is not in accord with Scripture. The, the passages which require study show that we must make a private interpretation. How can one study the Scriptures without making a private interpretation of Scripture? Actually, every passage, every passage in the Bible that is addressed to the individual shows that God wants and expects a private interpretation. God, through his word, addresses each individual as an intelligent being. Each person is responsible for himself. Another cannot decide or act for him. Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Now, Philippians 2.12 Therefore, every one of us will consider, will, will render an account of himself to God. The blessings of God are for those who obey his word. The curses are for those, on those, who do not obey. You have, to, you have to know what to obey. At the judgment, each individual will be judged by the things written in the Bible. And the dead were judged by the things which were written in the books. The fact that judge, God will judge each individual by the written word shows that each individual is required to interpret the Bible. Also, it shows that God, man is responsible to no other authority in religion. So let me go on over this again. The blessings of God are for those who obey his word. The curses are for those who do not obey. At the judgment, each individual will be judged uh, by the things written in the Bible and not the interpretation of some infallible interpreter. And the dead were judged by the things which were written in the books. The fact that God will judge each individual by the written word shows that each individual is required to interpret the word. Also, it shows that man is responsible to no other authority in religion. So, the false doctrine of the infallible interpreter. The doctrine of an infallible interpreter is completely false and wholly unworthy of an acceptance for the following reasons. It implies that the common people are too ignorant to understand God's word. First, it implies that the common people are too ignorant to understand. The religious leaders of Jesus' day thought the same when they said, Has any one of the rulers believed in him or any of the Pharisees? But this crowd which does not know the law, is accursed. They thought the people were too ignorant of the law to be able to decide if Jesus was the Christ. Nevertheless, the common people accepted Jesus, but the rulers rejected him. So much for infallibility of the rulers. The doctrine of an infallible interpreter implies that religious leaders should make decisions for the people. The Catholic doctrine of an infallible interpreter demands a dependence on the unanimous consent of Catholic officials for interpretation. Secondly, the doctrine of an infallible interpreter implies that religious leaders should make decisions for the people. It does not allow for one to make his own interpretation of Scripture, but demands a dependence on Catholic officials for interpretation. Please note the following. What Catholics do believe is that the Church, not the individual, must interpret and explain Christ's teachings, including those set forth in the Bible. Christians outside the Catholic fold do not, of course, accept this authority, but for Catholics it eliminates the doubts, confusion, and misunderstanding which inevitably results from individual interpretations. That's not true. I reviewed six particular points in the Bible and then consulted the early church Catholic fathers, and they have conflicting opinions with one another. So what do you pick? The intolerance of the church toward error, the natural position of one who is the custodian of truth, her only reasonable attitude makes her forbid her children to read or to listen to heretical controversy or to endeavor to discover religious truths by examining both sides of the question. In matters of fact and morals pertaining to the building up of the Christian doctrine, That is to be held as the true sense of the sacred scriptures which the Holy Mother Church has held and does hold, to whom it belongs to judge of the true sense and interpretation of Holy Scriptures, and therefore that it is permitted to no one to interpret the said scriptures against this sense, likewise against the unanimous consent of the fathers, which the early church fathers, more often than not, is not a unanimous consent. The Vatican Council, confirming the decrees of the Council of Trent, 4th Session, 1546, 
The unanimous consent of the fathers is a non-entity and not trustworthy in any case. The unanimous consent of the father is as much a non-entity as Paul Bunyan and Babe, the immense blue ox. Even if one could find something on which the early church fathers unanimously agreed, it, see, it still remains that they were purely uninspired writers with no authority whatsoever. We will not be judged by their writings in the last day. If there was any consent at all among them, it was in declaring the necessity and importance of the scriptures as the only authority in faith and morals. The above Catholic writers reveal that no Catholic can enjoy the, the right of private or in individual interpretation because only the church can give the true and authentic interpretation of scripture. Thus, like the wicked priests and false prophets of the Old Testament era, the Catholic Church has taken the word of God from the people. It does not want its people to have the word of God for its claim, for it claims sole interpretation for itself and puts footnotes in its version to explain away the meaning of passages which contradict its doctrine. Consequently, the Catholic people being forbidden to be guided directly by the word of God are left with a human and infallible guide, a fallible guide, the church. They must follow men rather than God. They must bow their heads to the commandments of men rather than God's holy precepts. Point three, the Bible teaches that each individual is responsible for himself and is not to blindly follow religious leaders. Jesus said, Beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly are ravenous wolves. Matthew 7.15 Paul said, And no wonder, for Satan himself disguises himself as an angel of light. It is no great thing, then, if his ministers disguise themselves as ministers of justice, and many are, but their end will be according to their works. The Bible nowhere implies that one is dependent on religious leaders for interpretation. However, instead, it commands the individual Christian to test every teacher by the written word. In the following, a Catholic authority affirms that we should do as the Jews of the Old Testament and follow the priests. Oops. But in those times, the faithful did not attempt to interpret Scripture for themselves. For the Jewish people in the pre-Christian era, the synagogue was their voice of scriptural authority, and the Old Testament was preached to them by the rabbis and fathers of the faith. In like manner, the Catholic Church was the custodian of the inspired writings of the New Testament gospel. Nearly four centuries before these writings were collected into a single book and formally declared to be inspired. Today, Catholics listen to one authoritative voice, the Church, in the interpretation of God's Word. The Jews of old were to listen to God's Word, not to man's interpretations. The Jews of old were to listen to God's Word, not to man's interpretation. When they became dependent on their leaders for interpretations, it proved disastrous to them. Notice the following from the Word of God, 28, 7 Isaiah. But there also have been ignorant through wine and through drunkenness have erred. The, the priest and the prophet have been ignorant through drunkenness. They are swallowed up with wine. They have gone astray in drunkenness. They have not known him that seeth. They have been ignorant of judgment. Jeremiah 53, 1, 5, 3, 1. The prophets prophesied falsehood, and the priests clapped their hands, and my people love such things. When, they, when then shall be done in the, the end thereof? John 8, Jeremiah 8, 10. Therefore will I give their women to strangers, their fields to others for an inheritance, because from the least even to the greatest, all follow their covetousness, from the prophet even to the priest, and all deal deceitfully. Jeremiah 23, 11. For the prophet and the priest are defiled, and in my house I have found their wickedness, saith the Lord. Ezekiel 22, 26. Her priests have despised my law and have defiled my sanctuaries. They have put no difference between holy and profane, nor have distinguished between the polluted and the clean, and they have turned away their, from their eyes, away their eyes from the Sabbaths. And I was profane in the midst of them. OZ 6, 9. And like the jaws of highway robbers, they conspire with the priests who murder on the, in a way those that pass out of Sikkim, for they have wrought wickedness. 
more on this next time.